Coin Op. Hello everyone, this is Dustin Morgan with Coin Op. Today we are going to be talking about Jefferson Nichols. Uh, we're going to be talking about basically coin searching or cherry picking Jefferson Nichols. Um, the series starts in 1938 still continues on. Uh, it's a great coin to collect. Uh, I mean, you can assemble an entire uncirculated collection, even the uh, key dates and semi-key dates, for fairly, fairly low money. So, it's just a great series to get into. Um, in this video, we're, we're going to be going over the key dates, the semi-key dates, the silver wartime nickels, and, some, well, and the major varieties. Uh, now, in the future, there's going to be a video here in a couple days on grading Jefferson Nichols, and then the third video in the series is going to be on a lot more of the Jefferson Nickel varieties to look for when you are coin searching or cherry picking. Um, now, all of these coins that I'm going to talk about in this video, every single one of them you can still find in pocket change, including the Silver Wartime Nichols. Now, if you are a new collector, the biggest thing that I ask is please don't clean your coins. It ruins the value. You, you destroy it for us collectors. Um, if you do feel the need to clean dirt off your coins, maybe soap and water. Just stay away from cleaning them. Okay, we're going to move on to the key dates and semi-key dates. Um, there's really only two that I consider to be true key dates in the series. First would be the 1950D, uh, the Denver Mint. Um, the 1950D does have the lowest mintage of 2,630,030. Uh, you can find these uncirculated between $15 and $30. So it's still nice and low in value. Uh, the next one that uh, has the second lowest mintage would be the 1939D uh, Denver Mint. The 1939D has a mintage of 3514000 and you can find them between $50 and $110 uncirculated. Um, just so you know, all the values I'm going to give you are on uncirculated pieces. Next up, to me, this would be a, a semi-key date, would be a 1938 Denver Mint, 1938D. This has a mintage of 5376000 You can pick one of these up uncirculated for between $7 and $15. We are going to follow that up with a 19. 38S. The 1938S San Francisco Mint has a low mintage of 4,105,000. Uh, the 1939S has a mintage of 6,630,000. Uh, you can pick these up for between $20 and $75. Uh, the 1949S has a mintage of 9,716,000 and you can find them from $1.50 up to $10. So this one you can definitely pick up fairly cheap. You can also find them in pocket change from time to time. Well, all of these you can find in pocket change. We are going to follow the 1949 San Francisco Mint up with a 1950. Uh, the 1950, it's actually a Philadelphia Mint, so it's not going to have a mint mark. This is a mintage of 9,847,386, and you can buy them for $2 to $8. We're going to follow it up with a 1951S, which is San Francisco Mint. The 1951S has a mintage of 7,776,000. Um, you can pick these up between $1, $1.50 to $12 in uncirculated condition. Be a great addition to a collection. And then last but not least in this little series of key dates and semi-key dates, we have a 1955 with a mintage of 8266200 and you can pick them up between $1 and $15. Next up we have Silver Wartime Nickels. Now I'm not going to narrate entirely over top of all of them, um, but 1942 Philadelphia and uh, San Francisco Mint all the way through 1945. Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco Mint are all 35% silver. Um, 
you'll hear people call them 40% silver. They're actually 35% silver. So they do have, you know, a uh, silver value, silver spot. Uh, I believe right now they're around 89 cents in silver in them. So you can easily pick these up, you know, um, in circulated condition around a dollar to a dollar fifty from a dealer. Uncirculated examples, uh, you can find anywhere between five dollars and twenty-five dollars. Uh, I'm not going to list the mintage. Most of these do have fairly high mintage. I believe the only one off the top of my head that has a fairly low mintage for uh, the silver of wartime nickels would be the 1943. Um, otherwise, they all have fairly high mintages. Now I will tell you that you can find a lot of these still in pocket change. They turn up time to time in people's cash registers. Um, I've gotten them in change. It's quite surprising when I reach into my pocket and see a really big mint mark over the top of the Monticello building. I immediately know it's a silver wartime nickel. Uh, that's one of the things that you can look for. They have the mint marks for the, the P, D, and S on all of them and they will be really big over top of the Monticello building on the reverse. As you can see in all the images of these various wartime nickels. It's always nice when you do find one of these, is it's, you know, you know you found at least a dollar, so 20 times its face value just by pulling it out of your pocket. That's always a good feeling. And there you have the Civil War Time series. Now we're going to move on to major varieties. This includes double dies, double die reverses, repunched mint marks, and over mint marks, and over dates. Okay, first of all, we are looking at a 1939 double die reverse. This is listed as an FS801 or DDR001. Very strong doubling. You see in Monticello, five cents, United States of America. Uh, you can find uncirculated examples of this coin for between $200 and $1,000. So definitely keep your eyes open for this 1939 double die reverse. Beautiful coin. Next up, we have a 1942 repunched mint mark. This is a Denver mint over top of a Denver mint, a D over D. It is listed as FS501 or RPM001. Uh, Repunch mint mark can be seen horizontal under the primary mint mark. This is a horizontal mint mark variety. You can see a horizontal D underneath that main D. In uncirculated condition, you can find that variety for $1,500 to $9,000. Okay, we are looking at a 1943 double die verse FS 101 or, I mean, yeah, FS 106 or DDO 006. Strong doubling is visible on Jefferson's eye, liberty, and the date. Uh, you can find this variety for between $90 and $600 in uncirculated condition. Next up, we have a 1943 over 2. This is listed as an FS 101 or DDO 003. Remains of a 2 can be seen inside the 3 on the date. Doubling can also be seen on Liberty and in God We Trust. You can find uh, examples of this uncirculated selling for between $200 and We are going to follow this variety up with a 1945 Philadelphia Mint Double Die Reverse listed as an FS801 
or DDR001. Strong doubling can be seen on Monticello, Five Cents, and on United States of America. You can find uh, this variety in Uncirculated selling between $70 and $800. This is also a very strong double die reverse. I would definitely keep your eyes open. It's also Civil War time. Next up, we have a 1949 D over S. This is listed as an FS501 or over mint mark 001 OMM001. An S can be seen within and above to the west of the primary D mint mark. And you can find varieties uncirculated selling for $150 to $480 of this exact variety. Next up, we have a 1954 S over D. This is listed as an FS501 or OMM-001. This is another over mint mark. A D mint mark can be seen within and to the south of the primary S mint mark. You can find uncirculated examples of this variety selling between $25 and $100. Once again, you can also cherry pick or coin search your own. And we are gonna follow this up Last but not least, the 1955 D over S. This is listed as FS501 or OMM001. This is yet another over mint mark. Uh, the D mint mark was punched a little south and over top of an S mint mark. Uh, you can find variety, I mean, you can find varieties. You can find this variety selling uncirculated between $35 and $105. So keep your eyes open. There's the major varieties for you. Here are things that are commonly mistaken for errors or varieties that are not. Uh, this would be an example of dye deterioration. This is not a double dye. People constantly think it is. You can see that it has doubling on both sides of the letters. That is not a double dye. That is dye deterioration or dye fatigue. An overworked dye. This is a gold-plated nickel. You will see lots of plated nickels. They plate them for many various reasons. People put together plated collections. This is not an error. This does not add any extra value or premium. When you see one of these plated nickels, if you like it, you know, feel free to collect it. But just keep in mind that it's, it's really a damaged coin, in all honesty. So, that's up to you. Last that I'm going to show. This is mechanical doubling or strike doubling. A lot of people can confuse this with double dies. This is not a double die. You can see it's got flat shelf-like appearance. You don't see extra serifs. Um, strike doubling is very, 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 very common on nickels. Nickel is made out of a weaker uh, metal. So you will see this all the time on nickels. It is not a double die. No extra value. It is very, very common. I think we're going to end this segment right here. Uh, we'll pick this back up in a couple days with coin grading uh, Jefferson Nichols, and then we'll follow it up with the third part of the series, which is going to be a lot more of the varieties, because there are a lot of Jefferson Nickel varieties. So I definitely hope that you enjoyed this video. I definitely hope, uh, help, uh, definitely hope that this helps you out in your coin searching. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled, keep your eyes open. These coins are not going to find themselves and have fun searching.